I picked this one because it is a two-dimensional problem. There is no K component, so there's no need for a, a z-axis. Okay, and the point of interest, as it turns out, will be at t equals minus 1. Okay, in words, what you'll see there is that they want us to sketch the path that this corresponds to, two-dimensional, find r prime, and at time t equals minus 1, sketch in the vector r of minus 1 and r prime of minus 1. And if I'm at all lucky today, you will find that they do look to be in the right positions. So let's see how it goes. Now, for sketching purposes, again, I think this is what the book has in mind, where all your z's are zeros. Just plug in some numbers. Now, since we're interested at t equals minus 1, I suspect we should stick near the origin. Let's try minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and a few more points if it's not apparent what's going on. Now, again, I'm making kind of my usual mistake of putting x here. What I should have is f of t, and that, in this case, is t squared. I'm trying to say that, yes, we are talking about points, but they are points that move. Okay, x is supposed to be t squared. Let's just do the columns here. If you square things, you get that. y is t cubed. So you cube things, you get minus 8, minus 1, 0, 1, and 8. And z, always 0. So in this particular problem, forget z, forget drawing anything, in fact, in three dimensions. I think it might be appropriate to invest in a little graph paper if you're doing these problems, precisely because you won't see the tangency of the derivative unless you have things really scaled properly. I'm going to have a tough time here probably doing that today. I don't, I'm not so fortunate. See why now already. Okay, and let's plot our points. At t equals minus two, it's four and minus eight. And the vector, let's just put it in lightly, of course is pointing in that particular position at that particular time. There's r at minus 2. Next one is uh, x equals 1, y equals minus 1. Unfortunately, it's in the same line there. And obviously, it, oops, there it is, right there. Shouldn't be in the same line. OK, so that's there. We're at the origin at t equals 0. And then it's at 1, 1 above the x-axis and 4, 8 a little bit later on. Well, you can draw a lot of curves there. That's the unfortunate point. So let me re remind you of uh, something I told you a couple of times ago, and that's the chain rule. We had y equals t cubed. We had x equals t squared. Chain rule says, if you wish to use it, dy dx is equal to dy dt divided by dx dt. Basically, the chain rule says it's fair to cancel off the dt's. And in this case, dy dt is 3t squared, dx dt is 2t, and so we get 3 halves t. The reason I've thrown this out is that now I know what the slope of the path is at any time t as well. For example, at t equals 0, the slope is 0. And that tells me a little bit more than I knew before, namely that as I come down here through these points, I should 
ease in there with a zero slope and then back off. Actually, I just made a, a blunder because in terms of time, I should have started down here. T equals minus 2, minus 1, 0, T equals 1, out to T equals 2, and on. So the fly today is feeling kind of low, stays right on the floor, and just kind of bounces against the wall, takes off in the other direction. Well, that's fine, but if someone walked in here and only saw this part of the blackboard, all that person would notice is what happened to the fly. Uh, I've, let's say I erase these T's here. He doesn't really see dynamically what's happened. If you just see the path, for all he knows, the fly came in from above and went out below. Or came down here and stood here for four days and then took off. I mean, you just don't know how things progressed. That's why you need something like a vector function. It gives you exactly what's going on at any time. Okay, next part is to look at the derivative. We found the derivative you can take by just taking derivatives of the components. Fantastic. That means that in this simple case, the derivative function will be 2ti plus 3t squared j. Now, they're not asking you to do a lot of graphing. Basically, they're saying, well, now sketch in the vector r at minus 1 and the vector r prime at minus 1. I want you to do at least that particular pair at that particular time. We've already done it over there, but let's just go back. If t is minus 1, r is the vector minus 1 squared plus minus 1 cubed j. Okay, and now that we have the derivative function, plugging in minus 1 gives us a minus 2i and a plus 3j. Okay, algebraically trivial. Now, what happens? You come back to your picture and say, here we are at t equals minus 1. It says go over i, go down j. The effect is, unfortunately, I got it so small you can't see it, but the effect is that there sits your vector r at t equals minus 1. That's in yellow, if you can see it. How about the velocity vector? If you believe me, it is a velocity vector. You go minus 2 units in the x direction, plus 3 in the j. So starting from right here, you go back 2 units. There's minus 2i. And you go 3 units in the, j, in the uh, y direction. Okay, minus 2i plus 3j. Well, not too bad. Not too good either. But at least it's in the right ballpark. There's r prime at minus 1. It does seem to be tangential. And as we will find out, if you take a flash of the fly at this particular point, the length of that vector is also how fast the fly is moving. So at any instant, we know exactly how fast things are going on. If you took r prime at plus 1, let's sketch that in too. What you're going to get is 2i plus 3j. So at plus 1, the, the figure changes. We go 2 units in the positive x direction, up 3 in the y direction. And it looks like one more time, we do have something that looks fairly tangential. So there's r prime at at plus 1. What's r prime at 0?
plug in zero for T, what do you get? Zero for both components, so you get the zero vector. So that's what happened, I guess. The fly stopped there instantaneously, has no velocity, has no direction, basically. That's kind of a bad point, as you might expect anyway. It's a sharp corner. I would stay away from that if you wanted to try to draw any conclusions. Well, as long as we have it here, let's do one more. What's r prime at minus 2? If you put minus 2 in for t, you get a minus 4i and a plus 12j. Okay? t equals minus 2. Gives us a minus 4 for the first component. Um, Yes, plus. I don't know where I got the minus. Plus 4 for the first component. No, no, no. Take it back. Plugging in the wrong number. T equals minus 2. Gives us a minus 4 there and a plus 12 there, I think. So let's see. Where's that? We're down here at uh, this place. Okay. And let's march off four units this way. Okay, that's back to the y-axis. And 12 units up, there's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I should use a different color this time. There is r prime at minus 2. Hope you can see that. Kind of a mysterious shadow there. But anyway, there is the tangential vector and, as we will find out, the velocity vector for this particular animal. I, again, I can't show you any great movies, unfortunately, but as that fly moves down the path, you can see the velocity vector is moving and decreasing to zero, flips around and starts increasing off in that direction. So that's what I was trying to say to you last time. Not only do you see the fly moving around, but stuck on that fly is this position vector kind of telling it where to go and a velocity vector telling us where it is going and how fast. Well, last time I, I tried to do a three-dimensional picture, I had some uh, problems with it by a bad choice of, of observation, in fact. What we did was look at a helix. Uh, I think it was this one. And normally I draw my pictures looking down into the first octant. That was kind of a bad situation then, so let me give you a slightly different look at this thing. We won't do all the work this time. Just try to recap what we did do. I'm going to look down into the xy plane from behind, and let me kind of leave the z-axis out of the picture for a while. In other words, we're back here above, but behind the z-axis, looking down into the first quadrant of the xy plane. Still above, but behind the z-axis. What happened last time was that this particular helix we found followed around the cylinder, wrapped around the cylinder, up around the z-axis. Now this would be the cylinder of radius 1 as it passes through the xy plane. The helix that we were describing at that point started out at t equals 0, at x equals 1, y equals 0, z equals 0, and as we found it progressed upwardly and circled around and went on up that way. If you've seen a helix, you know what I'm talking about. If not, go look at a spring on a car or something like that. Okay, what I was having a tough time with last time was uh, vectors pointing too close to the axes. With this particular picture, I think we'll be, be in better shape. At t equals pi over 4, that's supposed to be the position of the fly. A little bit more energetic today, flying off in a, a circling pattern, looking for those uplifts. And as what we were supposed to find last time, it's a little bit hard to draw, but 
if you check the picture, it was even harder to, to look at. What we did come up with was a derivative which seemed reasonable, if you saw the picture, as being tangential and pointing in the right direction. Okay. So just like this picture over here, imagine the fly moving up around the z-axis in a helix. At the same time, we've got position vector pointing at the fly at every instant, and stuck on the fly is this tangential vector, r prime. Okay? So, in particular, if you're over here at the beginning of the story, this would be r at zero, then your tangential vector would look something like that, r prime at zero. Here we are at pi over six pi over 4, pi over 3. We finally got over to pi over 2, and that was pretty much the end of the story that I was interested in. Here at pi over 2, well, it's kind of hard to describe, but at that particular point, the fly was basically smashing himself into the yz plane, if you look at the derivative vector. Let's do a new one. I've kind of driven the helix into the ground. This is number 20 on 686. It's not much different, but it's sufficiently different to maybe pre be interesting to you. Number 20, 